nice to see you all again on this beautiful, beautiful day. We've all got our cuppies. It's nice to be able to come along um, as part of God's family, come to focus on God for even a short time. As we come, and it's nice to come as that family because it's, it's as if we are close enough that we can share the most um, trying times together, but also the most delightful times together as well. So we're going to acknowledge God's continued presence in our lives, especially in our time together as we gather and sing as we are gathered Jesus is here. And as per usual, if you feel more comfortable standing to singing, that's fine. But if you're more comfortable sitting and singing, that's equally fine. And we're going to sing this little song a couple of times. So let's talk to God. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for your promise of your presence. We thank you that no matter what has happened in this world, you have not abandoned us. And we thank you that you continue to pour out your love upon us, even when we seem to shy away. And forgive us when we get so bound up in busyness and all of the distractions of the world around us that we forget to focus on you, that we forget to make you a priority. Forgive us when there is so much happening in our wider world that we take on those burdens and we become bound down by worry and concern, when you have offered to carry those burdens on our behalf. Forgive us when we don't heed the warnings, the warnings about our world, the warnings about the disaster that we face in relationships, when we don't listen to your word with understanding and acceptance. Forgive us when we think we know best, when, Lord, you are full of wisdom. And we ask that during this time together, not only would we be aware of your presence, but we would be touched by you. That we would actually feel the lifting of burdens and know your peace. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Folks, we're still in Acts Gospel, and we're looking at what happened after Jesus goes back to heaven and he's left his followers, if you like, to carry on the work, carry on the day job. And we have noticed that there's been ups and downs already. We've noticed that there's been certain events that have been um, breathtaking. Um, and we've kind of chopped back and forward looking at different issues. And today we've got two snippets that I've deliberately joined up, and you'll understand why. Because this was a major change in what was going on. We've referred to it in the passing as the stoning of Stephen. Stephen was a young man who became a follower of Jesus, and he was active in that early church. But he's arrested and tried by the Jewish people. And he gives a big, long speech, which I'm not going to read because it will take him a bit of time. It's not a bad idea. At some point, we might go back and have a look at the kind of things that he was saying, what he was saying, and why. Needless to say, it doesn't go down well. And a particular person, as you'll see, appears in here. We've already talked about Saul, who has this transformation because he has this um, encounter with the risen Lord Jesus. We understand when we read this passage that he is already on the scene. So I'm going to read it to you just now. How stubborn you are, Stephen went on to say. How heathen your hearts, how deaf you are to God's message. You are just like your ancestors. You have always resisted the Holy Spirit. Was there any prophet that your ancestors did not persecute? They killed God's messengers who long ago announced the coming of his righteous servant. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You are the ones who received God's law that was handed down by angels, yet you have not obeyed it. As the members of the council listened to Stephen, they became furious and ground their teeth at him in anger. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw God's glory. And Jesus standing at the right side of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right side of God. With a loud cry, the council members covered their ears with their hands. Then they all rushed him at once, threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses left their cloaks in the care of a young man named Saul. They kept on stoning Stephen as he called out to the Lord, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not remember this sin against them. He said this and died. And Saul approved of his murder. Some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as, how do you pronounce that? Anybody? Phoenicia? It'll be your fault. <laughs> I usually say confidently. <laughs> Cyprus and Antioch telling the message to Jews only. But the other believers who were from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to Gentiles also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's power was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The news about this reached the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw how God had blessed the people, he was glad and urged them to be faithful and true to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And the people were brought to the Lord. 
Amen. Let's sing again a not good old hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. We have been living in very strange times. And I know I've said that before, but what with the COVID and lockdown, and then war in Ukraine, and then of course the events that happened at the end of last week. And many times we wonder what on earth is going on now. And it's been interesting to see some of the news feed and some of the headlines, um, for example, uh, many of the newspapers have suggested that the gentleman on my right, your left, doesn't stand next to an open window <laughs> at any time soon. Because we know that the gentleman on the other side has a reputation for being a bit unforgiving. And bad things seem to happen to people who disagree, even politically, end up facing trumped up charges and long prison sentences for just having a different opinion. And that can be a bit difficult for us because our society is, a, is, is very different and pray God it stays very different always. But it also makes it difficult for us to understand what it was like way, way back at the start of the early church. 
what it was like living in that country and at that time. And bear in mind that when we look across some of those, what we would call Middle Eastern countries, even today, and think of Iran, for example, anybody who protests against the party line can end up with a sticky end, okay? Even today. So that mindset is still there even after generations. And for what we would call the early church, so the early followers of Jesus, they had quite a few hazards to look out for. Yes, there was the Roman Empire who were in charge at that time. They probably thought that all of this was a bit pathetic, all of this religious stuff, but they were, they were listening because anybody pronouncing that somebody else was a king or somebody else was a ruler or somebody else was son of God were standing in contradiction to the way that they held up the emperor. So they would have been keeping an eye on that kind of message. But the biggest issue for the, they had, at that point in time hadn't started to be called Christians, but let's call them Christians at that time, were the religious people, the Jewish people, who saw what was happening as blasphemy. And we know now, in some of the Middle Eastern countries, that this whole idea of blasphemy can carry severe penalties. And it could then as well. And as Stephen is trying to speak out a message, God's message, the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is met with immediate opposition because he's not towing the party line. He's not going with the flow. In fact, if anything, he's interpreting scripture in the same way that Jesus did. And so that was going counter to the direction of travel that they always used to be in. And they were not prepared to tolerate this. And so this, and we know he was a, a young man, a lovely man, a godly man, meets with a very, very cruel and nasty end. Notice his final words were not words of hate, were not words of, I hope God damns you to hell for eternity, but words of forgiveness. And the person standing in the background holding the jackets was this man called Saul, who we later followed on. And today I don't want to concentrate so much on Saul and his conversion, because Saul becomes a big player in the early church and makes a massive impact, that in itself is quite incredible. But I want to look at, and, and if you do have the time, pick up a Bible, or even go online, go into biblegateway.com, look at Acts chapter 7, and look at the, take the order of service home, look at the other passage, but read the whole account. It's very, very interesting. Because obviously, people scatter. Because if it's happened to Stephen, it could happen to them. And people are scared. And they don't just scatter, you know, to a neighboring town. Some of them scatter well across the area. But it goes on to say that some godly men stay and they look after Stephen's body and they take care of all of that. So you do have the follower of Jesus who remain. And who, in spite of that threat to life, continue, and they continue the work that Jesus called them to do, to get out there, spread the love of God, spread the word, let people know, make disciples. But the interesting thing is the other bit that I picked up on is that those who had scattered, wherever they scattered to, they start again, they continue as well. So now you're seeing this big spread, so out of this horrendous act 
out of this total disaster, it doesn't make them just go to ground and all doom and gloom. No, they scatter out there and carry on. And so now you're seeing the people locally who are still working with the Jews and other people still talking to the Jewish community and still speaking out about the Lord Jesus Christ, but others have moved into non-Jewish areas and they're speaking to the non-Jewish community. And wherever they're speaking out, the Holy Spirit moves and things happen. This event was a bit of a, one of these, you know, you, you, sometimes things can go along quite smoothly, then there's a big blip. It's a bit of a line drawn and it's amazing what God can bring out of an absolute disaster. Now, the church today, we're on that line. COVID did us no favors. COVID frightened people away. Un understandably so, we get that. It's wonderful that we still have a lot of people who still watch online. And, and, and we are grateful and we thank God for everybody who watches online because they are just as much part of who we are as those who can manage to come along. But it has to be said that church is changing and it is different. And we've got to be able to spot that line and move on. A colleague of mine wrote a book. This is Tommy McNeil. And he wrote a book called The Sleeping Giant the church, the sleeping giant. And sometimes we look at statistics and we can see the decline, not just in church attendance, but in church membership. And that's not just Church of Scotland, by the way. We can see this decline. And it's easy for us to think about the world in which we live and just go in on ourselves and feel all doom and gloom. But if we look to what happens in Acts, when something horrible happens, it's a case of, come on, and they might have had to scatter, but they don't give up. If anything, they're just as enthusiastic and more, have more effect on the people round about than they've ever had because they've spread their reach even further. Now, I'm going to say something that sounds nuts. So Church of Scotland have got fewer ministers than they've got had at any other time. Come on! It's time to spread our reach even further. Well, how do we do that? Well, with everybody else, with all of you, taking every opportunity that we can. And we recognize now that church isn't just necessarily going to be about what happens here on a Sunday or what happens here on a Thursday. It might be about messy church happening here. It might be about messy church happening in a community space where people are more likely to come in. We also have to recognize what we now call the invisible church. That's those really good, Christians who have disconnected from church altogether, many of whom will still get up in the morning and start the day with a prayer and a wee Bible reading, but have stopped going along. And maybe we need folks in every congregation that can come alongside and offer companionship and company an encouragement, and even a prayer partner so that we can still have people of faith growing and blossoming in every community. We have two ways of looking at this. And those who know me well will already know the way that I look at it. We can look at this with doom and gloom and think this is a disaster, and we can look at it and say, hey, bring it on. This is a wonderful opportunity. And whilst we've got a lot of work to do, you can think, Lord, what are you going to do next? I'm always amazed at the way that these people 
could, be, could watch something horrendous like that and yet be full of faith and say, Lord, what are you going to do next? And when they had that attitude, God opened doors. I'm excited about the doors that are going to open. I'm just hoping that we spot them and we're ready to run through and do all that we can, knowing, as they knew, that the Holy Spirit would be with them, that the Holy Spirit would not only make the opportunities, but give them the words and take over so that we can continue to have an impact in our communities. So let's talk to God about it. Let us pray. Loving Lord, today we pray particularly for your church. And by that we mean the people. And we pray for your church worldwide. We think especially of those who live in countries where they are still persecuted, where they can still come to physical harm and yes, even death, where they can be locked up for speaking your name. Lord, forgive us when we take all of that for granted. And help us never to forget them and we pray for them wherever they may be, that you would draw close, that you would surround them with your love and your peace. Loving Lord, we pray for your church in this country. Help us to be brave. Help us to have the hearts of a lion. Help us to be ready to speak your name and to speak out about your love. Help us to pass on a blessing. Help us to reach out and touch others. Lord, we ask for those opportunities. Help us to make the most of them. Help us to feel that sense of your presence and your excitement as you show us innovative ways to move forward. Loving God, we pray for all of those who watch at home, every single one. May they know that they are loved by you and by us. Lord, we pray for those who aren't well, and that's why they can't be here. Or those who are just simply not fit enough to be able to come along. That they would know your presence something real, close up and personal. Lord, we pray for our families and our friends and our neighbors. And we ask that you would touch them too. And give us the words of love and kindness and patience. And give us the compassion that you yourself show all of the time. And loving Lord, we take a few moments of silence while we bring before you our own personal worries and concerns. Lord, we thank you for this time. It's so good to come together. We thank you for the ladies that are making food for us over in the hall. And we thank you for the food that we are about to eat. We thank you for those at home that may too be going to make food, each and every one. And we ask that you would bless them right where they are. And we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers and that you are always close. So we make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close with a really good going hymn, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord.
So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.